Jen here with a, another YA book review for you. Um, you're probably surprised to see two uploads back to back, but I was able to finish um, this book in a week. Um, and this is A Question of Homes, which is the fourth book in the Charlotte Home series. And I really love this series. This is also the final book in the series. Um, you can find the reviews for the other three on this channel. When I read the third book, I think I had thought at first that it was the end of a trilogy. And then I don't know if Brittany Cavallaro got, you know, opted for a fourth book. But now there are four books in the series. This is the end and it does end in such a way that it is the end. Um, and it's really cute. It's actually my favorite of the series probably. My other friend who read the series also said the same. And part of the appeal for me was in this book, let me backtrack, in the other three books, Charlotte has a lot of dark episodes. She has a lot of inner demons. Um, I am trying to do this review without spoiling the other three books in case you find this review not having read those books. Um, but those episodes sometimes were kind of hard to read. You know, essentially Charlotte um, is a descendant of Sherlock Holmes and her family, you know, she's very analytical and she's very not familiar with feelings and that is a number of factors from her family and her upbringing to some things that happened to her that you find out over time in the other three books. Um, Watson is named Jamie and he's a descendant from Watson and so like their families have always kind of been intermingled in a way. Um, this one, they're in England and they are um, taking some summer classes and they're approached by someone who used to be the director of like a theater program and a actress from the theater program the previous year had been missing and there are just like some odd incidents as far as I know no one had been hurt or killed but this girl went missing so technically you don't know if she was hurt or killed and so they're sort of hired to try and figure out what happened and also to kind of prevent future things from happening so that's the primary premise of the story the interesting thing about the dynamic between Charlotte and Jamie is they're trying to actually officially date in this story, um, which is very difficult for Charlotte. So this book really focuses a lot on her healing from the other three books and those dark episodes and various addictions that she's had um, and things having to do with her family. And that component was really good. And this whole book was pretty much first person from Charlotte and I, I can't remember how the other three books are I don't think they were all I think a lot of them actually alternated um, and I think maybe even one was primarily Jamie's perspective but I really can't remember but the epilogue of this book is Jamie's perspective um, I cried at the end for a few reasons it was there were some personal things that even though happened differently in the book really resonated with some personal things in my life um, so that was kind of emotional for me, but then also just it being the end of the series. Um, and it was just sad because I've really grown to like Charlotte and Jamie. And if you follow my channel, you know, I've been struggling with reading for about eight months now and just like not very many books have grabbed my attention, um, or con are connected with me. And this series really connected with me. Um, each book can kind of stand alone. I mean, there are some elements that you need that between Charlotte and Jamie, but the cases more or less stand alone throughout the books. Um, this one was really good. Uh, it's not very long. It was like 280 pages. For me, normally that probably would take me a week. It took me about two weeks um, to read it. But right now, for how slow things have been for me, like I'm talking about, I used to be able to read like eight books in a month, 12 books in a month to barely being able to finish one book a month at this point. And there's a lot of things in my life that have changed, you know, my own personal motivation. I've changed careers and things like that um, that have made it more difficult. And I think that's natural, right? Us bookworms tend to, some of us tend to ebb and flow in terms of, you know, reading time and motivation to do it and interest in doing it versus other things that are going on in life. Um, but this series is really, really good. If you want a unique spin on the whole... Holmes and Watson thing, 
Um, I highly recommend this if you're a fan of Maureen Johnson's uh, The Vanishing Stare. I really recommend this. Another book I recommend when I recommend these two is a book called Jane Unlimited, which is a standalone that I have reviewed on this channel. And it's really good. It's kind of like, you know, it's mystery and it's sort of like Westinghouse and it's sort of like the Charlotte Holmes vibe. And it's that's a good one, too. But this series is just in like Charlotte's arc across the series is very strong and to see how she was in the first book to how she is in this book is pretty amazing. Um, Brittany Cavallaro uh, and Emily Henry often they're very good friends. Emily Henry is one of my favorite YA authors. I will be reading her book When the Sky Fell on Splendor. Um, probably hopefully starting it tonight so you can hopefully expect a review for that because I love The Love That's With The World and um, A Million Junes is another one that I love that are also reviewed on this channel. Um, but Brittany and Emily are good friends and they also collabed on a book called, oh man, I'm totally blanking on it now. It's not called New Girl. <laughs> I had it, I was just talking to someone about it earlier today and now I've just like completely blanked on the title, but it focuses on female friendships. Um, their styles are really not similar unless you look at the similarities between kind of like, I feel like Brittany Cavallaro's writing is really clean. Um, and then, you know, Emily Henry really excels in like the magical realism uh, department of things. But I like both of them, so I'm going to venture to say that if you like one or the other, you know, you'll probably like the other one. So um, I highly recommend this book. I ended up giving it five stars. It was a very quick read for me. The mystery was engaging because you kind of figure out like who the main players were, but you couldn't really figure out how how they played, right? How they did what they did. So that was really good. And just seeing, you know, Charlotte and Jamie's relationship evolve, seeing Charlotte's healing, even though the ending isn't necessarily what I wanted, it was still the perfect ending. And that was a little bit of a bittersweetness, which made me emotional at the end. Um, highly recommend the Charlotte Holmes series. Um, they're excellent. I've also been told um, A Curious Beginning by Veronica Speedwell. Or wait, I think it is a Veronica Speedwell book. I don't remember who the author actually is. But that series has come highly recommended to me because of my love for this series. Um, so if you enjoy that and have read that, chances are you probably enjoy Charlotte Holmes as well. I feel like I've kind of rambled enough about this. It's very hard to do a book review without really giving away, you know, for the fourth and final book in a series without giving away any spoilers related to other books. But super enjoyed this. I'm really sad that it's over. So in the meanwhile, happy reading and happy reading. <laughs>